channel so for today's video I'm doing a pancake mukbang that my sister made for me and then I also got some pastries too um, so for the pancakes she made me a birthday cake funfetti pancake a cinnamon roll pancake and an Oreo pancake and I'll have all the recipes linked to this in the description and then I also wanted to do like a pancakes and pastries like breakfast type mukbang so I also got three pastries from this local pastry shop um, called Nielsen's. It's like a, supposed to be like an authentic Danish pastry place. So I got a Snitter, which is their version of a cinnamon roll. So it's like a flat cinnamon roll. And then I also got a bear claw and a Danish. So I'm more excited about the pancakes. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start eating them right away. But I also have a conspiracy theory today. So I'm also gonna talk about that in a second. It's about I asked you guys on Instagram whether or not you wanted me to do a JFK conspiracy theory or a Mandela Effect conspiracy theory. And Mandela Effect won, I think it was like 64 to 56%. So I'm going to talk about the Mandela Effect today. It's like really hard to eat. Mm. Okay, so for the conspiracy theory, I feel like the Mandela Effect's been covered a lot. Like, if you, I've heard about it sent from Shane Dawson, so if you watch Shane Dawson, you've probably heard of it, or if you just are familiar with YouTube in general, you've probably heard of it. So I tried to find information on it that I hadn't heard or that I thought was gonna be new information. So I always hear a lot of people talking about the examples of the Mandela Effect, but I never hear people talking about why it would be a thing or why the Mandela effect would exist, I guess. So I tried to research that a little bit. Mmm. That's so good. So if you don't know what the Mandela Effect is, it's basically that you could have experienced events from a different reality. So it's basically where you remember something and a whole bunch of other people remember something that never happened. So it started, or the name Mandela Effect was coined when Nelson Mandela died and a whole bunch of people remembered him dying. So he actually died in 2013 and a whole bunch of people remember him dying in prison in the 1980s. And so, when he died, everyone was confused, or not everyone, but a lot of people were confused because they vividly remember him dying like 30 years prior. Because a lot of people even remember seeing clips of his funeral on TV. So when he actually passed away, they were like, I remember watching his funeral like 30 years ago. So a whole bunch of people realized that they all had this same mismemory. And so that's basically where the Mandela Effect term came from. And so there's two different 
I guess you could say explanations for why people think the Mandela effect is caused. One of them is just that we live in alternate universes. So neither group, the people who remember Nelson Mandela dying and the people who don't, like neither group is wrong or making it up or anything like that. Like they both experience that reality and those realities just came together to our reality today. So it's basically just that you could be living in an alternate universe and experience something and then somehow the universes come back together and then that memory never happened. So that's the first explanation. And then the second explanation that I actually did quite a bit of research on and it actually kind of scared me like I had to go run down, so my laundry is downstairs in my apartment's basement and I had to go run down <laughs> and do my laundry after I researched this and I was like actually kind of scared. So this other explanation is that this group called the European Center for Nuclear Research or CERN for short is basically intentionally changing history and warping our reality. So reading from my notes, on their website they describe themselves as physicists and engineers that are probing the fundamental structure of the universe. Which sounds kind of sketchy in the first place. I don't know why you want to probe the structure of the universe, but... Okay. So basically they're a group of scientists and they use super high-tech scientific instruments to study matter and like the basic particles that make up our universe. And they're just like, they have the most advanced equipment to do so. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. <laughs> This is the Oreo one. And a lot of people really don't like this because they didn't get any international okay or anything like that to start doing these experiments. They kind of just started doing them. It's just scary because they deal with particles that are so powerful that I there was this one fact that like one particle of this antimatter they deal with equals 30,000 Hiroshima bombs. So it's scary that they deal with that kind of stuff and they didn't really get like a specific okay or guidelines or anything like that to do it. So they just basically can use their like instruments and all that kind of stuff, just do whatever they want. So these concerns were also repeated by Stephen Hawking, who if you don't know who he is, he was a world famous scientist and he said that, so CERN found this god particle, which is supposed to be like the original piece of matter in the universe. And Stephen Hawking said that the god particle that was supposedly the original matter found by CERN could destroy the universe. So even Stephen Hawking was kind of scared about what CERN could do with what they found. So I'm going to try one of these pastries next. Um, this one is the Danish, so it's supposed to be like an original Danish. I don't know what a non-original Danish is, but... Mmm! So that's the inside part. That's really good. The jam they used is really good. So yeah, basically people think that CERN wants to open up a portal in our universe and use that to kind of warp time. So on their website, they actually even say, verbatim, I'm sorry I keep bringing it off my nose, but I can't remember these quotes exactly. So they even say that a way of revealing dimensions would be through the production of microscopic black holes. So basically the gravitational pull from the black hole would be so great 
that nothing could escape, not even time. So it would just create another type of dimension. This stuff is kind of over my head because I'm not into science at all. So if it doesn't really make sense, it's because it's kind of confusing for even me to grasp. Basically, a way of revealing dimensions is through black holes. So that's terrifying that they even like say that on their website. So obviously CERN says that they're just trying to understand the universe and that's why they do all these crazy experiments and accelerate particles and all that like weird stuff. But it's kind of creepy because first off, they have a statue outside of their headquarters of, I guess their mascot is the goddess Shiva, which is a Hindu goddess and she's the goddess of destruction, which that's scary. Like the fact that you have a goddess of destruction as your mascot is just like, oh, it gives me shivers when I read that. Oh yeah, and so this is the bear claw. So it's good, but there's like nothing in it or anything like that. It's just like a sweet cut of bread almost. Kind of like a croissant, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, it's okay. And so then this last one is their snitter. So it's like the cinnamon roll, the flat cinnamon roll, which I'm excited for. This legit tastes like brown sugar cinnamon Pop-Tarts. Which those are my favorite, so. And then another creepy fact about CERN is that if you look at their logo, which I'll put a picture of it up on the screen, but if you look at their logo, it legit looks like 666, which is just, a weird coincidence and just seems kind of intentional like if you look at the logo it's this just looks incredibly clear that it's 666 wait I don't know what else they could have been going for when they did that so basically this would mean that the what CERN is doing is making some people remember the old timeline and some people remember the new timeline, so they're basically just kind of destructing the timeline that we exist in. So this theorist from Harvard, her name is Lisa Randall, said that there exists another dimension, and when there's a shift in gravity, that you can catch a glimpse of another dimension. So that would basically explain why, with what CERN is doing with matter and particles and stuff like that, and black holes, that would create a shift in our dimension that would allow us to kind of like a weird um, weaving from dimension to dimension which would explain why some people remember things one way and some people remember things another way. And then one more thing about CERN too that really creeped me out is so there was a video that they posted I believe to YouTube and it shows the CERN employees like just dancing around and I think the title of the video is We Are Happy at CERN and they're just dancing around and everything. They're actually dancing in front of, they um, have this really like fancy piece of equipment called the Large Hadron Collider, I think. And it basically just like accelerates particles, but they're like dancing around in front of it, in front of it and like having fun. And then the scene flashes to this one professor or doctor. His name is Dr. John Ellis. And he's holding two signs. One sign says Mandela, which is creepy because there's no reason for him to have a sign that says Mandela. And then the sign above the Mandela sign says Bond One. And this is kind of a reach, but I was reading up on what that could mean. And if you go to the first James Bond movie, the person who played the James Bond character's last name was Nelson. So if you think of it that way, it goes Nelson Mandela, which is creepy because they're basically like, we know about your Mandela effect and like we're just kind of kind of poke fun at it, which could be them just and their weird sense of humor, but it, it just kind of freaked me out that people are so freaked out about this and they're just kind of making light of it and just 
in a really subliminal way, you know, like holding up signs in their video. It just like weirded me out. So I know that was a really long-winded way of explaining about how the Mandela Effect is caused and all that, but I felt like it was something that a lot of Mandela Effects don't cover or Mandela Effect conspiracy theories don't cover, so I wanted to kind of cover why the Mandela Effect was a thing. And then now I'm going to talk about my... So I'm gonna, I have a list compiled of Mandela Effects. So some of them I've experienced, which is why I've, I've included them, and then some of them I included that... I thought were just extra freaky or like lots of people have experienced it. Mm. So one of them that I didn't personally experience but a lot of people have and it's one that even though I've never watched the movie I can see why it makes zero sense that this scene would change this way so it comes from the first James Bond movie Moonraker and I guess there's a villain in it called Jaws and he, he has metal teeth and so there's this scene where he meets his girlfriend and he smiles at her with his metal teeth and you kind of I guess the audience is supposed to assume that she'll be scared by his teeth and just be like not attracted to him but then in the original movie, she smiles and she has braces, and then that's their instant connection, is the fact that he has metal teeth and she has braces, and so then they kind of like fall in love. But now in the movie, she doesn't have braces. She smiles and her teeth are normal, and they still fall in love, which kind of just defeats the entire purpose of the scene, because their whole connection is supposed to be based off the fact that they have metal teeth, you know? There's a website uh, that describes movies and characters. And on the website, she's even described as having braces. And I guess that if you talk to anyone who watched the movie, they remember her as having braces. And that scene is super vivid because she smiles and they have that instant connection. And then I guess after the movie was released, there was a commercial with the villain in it who played Jaws and he smiles a girl in the commercial, I think it's about a Visa card, and he smiles at her and then at the end she smiles back and she has braces so it's supposed to be like a play on Dolly, the character in the movie with braces. The fact that the commercial, the girl has braces but in the movie she doesn't is just weird. And then the next one really weirded me out. Like, I was watching Mandela Effect Conspiracy Theories as I was getting ready today, and Sarah was cooking in the kitchen, and she could hear the computer playing the videos. And when we both heard this one, she came out, and she was like, what? That is not true, blah, blah. So picture Judge Judy in her mind. She's like an iconic, the TV show, I think it has like over 5,000 episodes. Picture her in your mind. Okay. Does she or does she not have a gavel? I'll wait. She does not have a gavel. What? I remember watching her. I used to go over to my neighbor's house. It's like she was an older lady and I used to go over after school and watch Judge Judy with her. I specifically remember Judge Judy like banging her gavel to get people's attention. And apparently she's never used a gavel in any of the TV shows that she's had. Which is insane. When me and Sarah heard that, we were both like, there's no way. Like, we both remembered her having a gavel. So then another one that really tripped me out, too, was Forrest Gump. And I guess, so in that movie, you've probably heard a million times that he says, life is like a box of chocolates. But in the real movie, he doesn't say that. He says life was like a box of chocolates. And there's even interviews with Tom Hanks where he repeats that phrase and he says life was like a box of chocolates. 
And then there's also old VCRs of the Forrest Gump movie that quote on the back, life is like a box of chocolates. So I don't know where the life was like a box of chocolates came from or like how that randomly got changed in the movie. But when I watched it, I remember him saying life is like a box of chocolates. And then another one that really freaked me out too was the JFK assassination, which is kind of weird because I was thinking about doing a conspiracy on him, but so if you think about, I'm sure everyone, pretty much everyone has seen the footage of JFK at least before he got shot, or at least pictures, um, and if you picture in your mind, I want you to picture the car that he was driving in. How many people were in that car? There was six people in the car. The car was a six-seater, which all, everything I can recall, I only remember there being like four seats in the car. Like him and his wife were in the back seat and then there was two people up front. I never remember there being six people in the car, like ever. So that one tripped me out. And then the last one I'll talk about, cause I'm getting kind of full, is the thinker statue. So there's this famous statue of a man who is thinking. <laughs> the thinker statue, of course he's thinking. So I wasn't familiar with this one before I read about the Mandela effect, but the evidence that points to the statue changing is kind of weird. So in the real statue, the one that supposedly exists today, he's posing like this with his hand on his chin. But then a lot of people remember him posing with his hand on his forehead. And then there's also pictures of people posing with the statue and they will have their hands on their forehead. So you would think if you're posing next to a statue, it would be pretty easy to imitate. Like you literally just copy exactly what the statue does. So it doesn't really make sense that they wouldn't be able to copy what the statue was doing, it makes more sense that the statue originally had his hand on his forehead and then somehow another alternate universe it got changed, I don't know. So those are pictures of people posing with it the wrong way, but yeah, that's just weird because you think like all you have to do is just look at what the statue's doing and pose exactly like it, so it's weird that there's multiple photos of people posing the wrong way. But yeah, there's a lot more Mandela effects than that. Um, I tried to pick out the ones that I've experienced or that I thought were really weird because some of them I'm like kind of iffy about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was a little bit shorter than my other conspiracy theory videos. I didn't know what else to cover for it. So I hope you guys still liked it. I tried to do as much, as much research as possible. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the food. The pancakes were awesome. And yeah, I will see you in my next video.